but for his mercy and his grace on the heap life of those in misery I was blinded by mistakes that I once made and one day I finally met my savior he said I already paid the price at Calvary and since that day I've never been the same oh Calvary you're the best thing that ever happened to me oh Calvary you're the best thing closest friend He already chose to give his life for me So I chose to give my life to him Calvary is the best thing that Traveling, whatever, looking at your phone. 
uh, we're just glad to have you with us uh, this morning. Amen. And uh, so just sit back, uh, worship with us. Uh, let us feel something in the spirit. Respond to God. Amen. If the word touches your heart, respond to the word. And let it be planted in your heart and your life today. Praise God. We're going to start off with a worship song this morning and lift up the name of the Lord together. If you know it, sing it right along with us. You should be able to see the words behind us too. If you don't know it, you can learn it this morning. Amen. Lord bless you today.
so good. You are so, so good. Hallelujah. We worship him in the house this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you have it some praises of his people. Doesn't matter. Doesn't say you have habits. You gotta be in a certain place, but he said he inhabits the praises of his people. So it don't matter where you are, you can just lift your hands, you can just praise and worship him. And I just feel like doing that so much this morning. He is so worthy, he is so due. I am so unworthy of the gifts that God has given me and what I feel in my spirit this morning. I am just so thankful to be a member of God's kingdom, a child of God. God is so, so good to me. And I know that he's so, so good to you this morning. So let's just worship him. I'm going to get through my little prayer request thing here. And we're just going to continue to worship and to praise God and to listen to his word this morning. Uh, Sister Baxter, remember her? She needs some. She needs prayer this morning. That, Probably going to have to send her home because of some, some things. But uh, just remember her this morning. She needs prayer. Remember Brother Moore battling those illnesses. He just he really needs prayer this morning. God can reach down and touch him. I believe that. Remember Brother Conn's sister. Uh, the progress is she's doing better, but uh, quote, she's not out of the woods yet. Um, but there's some still some... Uh, Thinks she some hurdles she's gonna have to get over. So remember her in prayer. And let's remember sister Angel Flower, stepmom, she battled cancer. Uh, just you know, tough situation. Just remember just remember her this morning that God can give her some comfort and and if it's good God's will for him, her, him to heal her, and so be it. Uh, just pray that God be glorified in that situation, whatever God's perfect will is in that situation. I pray for that this morning. So just remember those, and uh, just a quick announcement, Mother's Day, uh, May 10th, uh, we will have a special speaker of some kind, uh, so let's uh, be prepared for that, whether we are here uh, together or we are here via uh, media or whatever you want to call it, through this stuff that we're having to do, Facebook or these live sessions that we're doing together. Uh, but that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and if you have a need, just lift it up right now. We're going to take these before the Lord, before we go into worship. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord, I, again, I say I'm so thankful, Lord. I can bring my, my trials, my tribulations, my heavy weights, Lord. I can lay them at your feet. Lord, I can lean upon you, Lord Jesus, and you can take care of all things, Lord. But the Bible says that nothing is impossible with you. You can do all things, Lord. So I lay with your feet and I lift my hands to you, Lord Jesus. I give you glory and honor, Lord. Lord, these requests, Lord, Sister Baxter, Brother Moore, Brother Khan, Sister, Lord, Sister Angel Father, Stepmom, Lord, these situations, Lord, every hand that's lifted high, Lord, in this congregation and on this live stream, Lord, we, we give it to you, Lord. We give you praise and glory for it, Lord. And we're thankful, Lord. We're counting upon you, Lord, your perfect will in every situation. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. God bless my wife this morning.
Hallelujah in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let's praise him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you this morning. Magnify your name. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a song that comes to my mind. I don't know if we can sing it this morning. Put Sister Pam on the spot just like they did a written service. So they did this morning. But <laughs> Jesus, there's just something about that name. Yeah. I don't even know if we can sing it. But it just seems like that that would fit with the vein of the spirit this morning that you know there's something about the name of Jesus that you can call on his name and uh, that he is that ever present help that ever present strength and peace or whatever it is that you need in this morning and uh, I don't know if we're okay in singing it or not this morning but we might just try it just a little bit just lift up the name of Jesus will you do that with me this morning amen just lift up the name of Jesus amen and uh, just entertain his presence this morning
Amen. Praise God. Appreciate my help this morning with those who are helping me today. Music, the camera, the sound, the scriptures on the screen, all of that. Appreciate your help with that. And uh, we hope it blesses you this morning. I want to come to the word of the Lord to you and preach from one of the minor prophets, Habakkuk. Um, don't hear from it too much. It's one of the shorter books of the Old Testament. Not this short, it's been one of those. But just talk to you a little bit from this uh, scripture in Habakkuk chapter 2. I'm just going to read three verses, then I'm going to go forward with the thought. And I want to talk to you about this statement. Faith in the promise and patience to wait for it. Faith in the promise and then patience to wait for it. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Amen. Say it with me this morning. Wait for it. Hallelujah. Wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. I want to say this morning, wait for the promise of God because it will come. Hallelujah. It will come. Because the promises of God are sure and anchored, everlasting in time. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you again about faith in the promise and patience to wait for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, God bless this word. We pray to every heart that hears it. In Jesus' name, praise God. I want to talk to you about this. In chapter 1 of Habakkuk, the prophet complains to God of the violence done. Anybody ever complain this morning? Maybe nobody out there this morning has never experienced that. But here's a man of God who is complaining to God, not complaining for himself, but he's complaining to God of the violence that's done to his own people, Habakkuk, and the hardships that they had to endure. I think we find ourselves right now going through a little bit of a hardship. It's just a season of life. It's not the end of the world as we know it. And if it is, and you're ready to go, then so be it. But God then uses Habakkuk to prophesy about the punishment that the people will receive by the army of the Chaldeans. And the prophet expresses his frustration about what God is even saying about that. He just finds himself uh, not in agreement with what God is doing at that moment in his life. Maybe you felt like that. Maybe you feel like that today. And I hope that after I'm done, it'll speak to you and help you this morning. Habakkuk was crying out to God. He was saying, Lord, send a revival. In the first chapter of Habakkuk, Lord, send revival. Lord, heal our people. God, touch our people. God, why won't you answer me, Lord? Why won't you give an answer for this situation, this time in our history? And God did give him an answer. In chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, when he said this, For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. He said, I am going to do a work, Habakkuk. You may not even believe it as I'm telling you right now to your face, but you can bank on it, prophet. I have a plan, and it's going to unfold in the time that I determine." God went on to say that he was going to send Babylon to destroy Judah and Israel for all of her sin. Babylon, the most wicked of all the nations, would come and take Israel and Judah captive because of their sins. This was not the answer this morning that Habakkuk was expecting, nor was it the answer that he was wanting. So he began asking God a second set of questions. Because of the answer God had initially given him. Amen. That is the way it is with us this morning in our lives. If not now, at times and seasons 
of our life uh, when God gives us the answer, but it's really not the answer that we were wanting. And so we continue to beseech God and call on Him to help us in that moment. He felt, Habakkuk did, he felt that God was being inconsistent. You see, to him it didn't make sense to him. God, why do you keep silent when the wicked come to destroy the righteous? God, why are you even using these wicked people to destroy your holy city? It doesn't make sense, God. This is not the way it's supposed to happen. And maybe you're feeling that way this morning what we're going through. God, this is not the way that I envisioned that God's people would have to experience. This is not the way that I thought your plan would unfold. Yet in chapter 2 of Habakkuk, we find him, the prophet, with a totally different perspective. Maybe this morning I'm trying to speak to you to help you find a new perspective in the situation you find yourself in today. Amen. It doesn't make sense to you. You can't reason in your mind and figure it out. Amen. And you're looking at it from that perspective of your carnal mind and your way of thinking this morning. But like the prophet, you may find out, like he did in chapter 2, that he got a totally different perspective. He got a different way of thinking. He's not going to give up on God. You see, that's not the answer this morning. When you don't understand what's going on, when you can't reason and find the end from the beginning in your mind, that the answer is not to give up on God. And that was not what the prophet was going to do. Instead, we find him waiting on God for an answer. Oh, we find ourselves in today's situation, trying to figure it out, trying to understand it. Amen looking for an answer, but I'm here to remind you today that he has an answer. He has a plan. He has a purpose for what we're going through. And if you'll have patience long enough and faith to hold on to the promise of God, you'll see the answer come by and by. Listen to what he says in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Habakkuk decided to do two things differently in this chapter than what he did in the first chapter. He said, I will stand upon the tower. I will wait and see what God's answer will be. In the days of the Old Testament, almost every city had walls and watchtowers that were elevated high above the city. And from these towers, one would get a totally different perspective of what was happening to them below. I'm here this morning to speak to somebody and say God wants to give you a different way of seeing things. He wants you to retain a different uh, perspective in your spiritual walk with him today. And, and in essence, Habakkuk was saying, Lord, I, I'm going to get a different perspective on this situation. For too long, Hab Habakkuk, uh, the prophet, had been down below uh, where all the unbelievers believers were. Amen. They wouldn't listen to the preaching of the word of God. In fact, they were mocking him for walking with God, ridiculing him. And it wasn't too long before Habakkuk began to believe what they were saying. Listen, if you spend time around people that don't care about God, that don't love God, that don't give a hoot about God, it won't be long before it begins to affect you. And if that's what you find yourself in this morning, then you need to find a high and mighty tower in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let him give you a new perspective this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you see, that's all he could see. That was all that he could hear. That's all his heart was focused on this morning. Amen. Perspective this morning is relative to what we're looking at. And from where the prophet was, it looked like there was no hope. From where the prophet was, it looked like that it was a dead end road. It rode. From his perspective, it looked like God had abandoned his own people and that God care about what they were going through. In fact, I think in his mind, he thought that God was being too harsh at that moment in their history, yet somehow Habakkuk sensed, I have got to get out of here. I've got to get out of this place in my life. I'm surrounded by evil. Wickedness is all around me, and if I don't get out of this location in my walk with God, it's going to destroy my faith. It's going to destroy my 
walk with God. I've got to get out of here. I've got to go somewhere where I can see things a little more clearly. I want to encourage somebody today. If you find yourself surrounded by doubt, if you find yourself surrounded by fear, then you have to determine, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to find a place of prayer. I'm going to find a place of dedication. I'm going to find a place of the presence of the Lord and get a new perspective on what God wants to do for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Habakkuk took himself away from the problem. That's what you got to do sometimes. Take yourself away from the problem. Then he put himself in, in a place where he could see more clearly from his location in the watchtower. You see, there's a spiritual representation. Amen. When you talk about the tower in the scripture. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord, hallelujah, we just sang about it a little earlier. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Habakkuk said, I've got to get to the tower. I'm telling somebody this morning, you need to get into that strong tower. The name of the Lord, call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Call on the name of Jesus and he will deliver you, hallelujah still stands today for all that would come. But as Habakkuk found himself in his new location, his new position, now Habakkuk is no longer talking. He's listening. That's hard for us to do sometimes, isn't it? He is now listening. He's not arguing with God. He's submitting to the will of God. That's even harder for the flesh to do sometimes. Amen. But he's submitting to God. He's no longer making his own demands. Well, God, you ought to do this. God, you ought to do that. But you see, he's looking to God now. God, I need you to speak to me. I need your direction. Maybe you feel that way this morning, that you need to find that tower in your walk with God where you can get alone with him and he can speak to you this morning. Hallelujah. I believe that he can. Hallelujah. Now, he has a clearer vantage point. The prophet does to see what is really happening. Amen. When you go to the top of the gateway arch, I don't know how many of you have been up there. It's been many years since I went I don't know if that's because I'm scared or what, but anyway, I remember going up to the arch, and I don't mind kites a whole lot, a whole lot, and uh, I remember going up there, and you kind of had to lean out to look out the window, hallelujah, and when you're high up in the arch, amen, you don't see all the trash that's down there in the ground. You don't see all the crime that's taking place and all the ugliness that's all around in that area that you might be and down there on the streets. Instead, you see a beautiful landscape highlighted by the great and powerful Mississippi River. It gives you a completely different perspective and a better view of the whole picture. How do you see the beauty of what's going on? We've said it many times. Sometimes we get so close to the forest, we can't see the tree. We need to get along from God. Let him pull us up to a place and say, hold on a minute. You just need to take a breath. Hallelujah. You need to take a breath and think a moment and then get a fresh perspective of what I'm doing. Don't you think for a moment this morning that things are out of control? Don't you think for a moment that we, that we have no idea what's going to take place in the next week or month or year? We do because God knows and if he knows, everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. And sometimes we just need to change our perspective so we have a better appreciation for what God is doing. I ran across this little story. There was a little boy about three years old. Uh, he played every day in his fence yard. And every now and then he would stand at the fence and view all that his eyes were able to see in his backyard. On one side of the yard, it, it was obstructed. It had an obstructed view of the neighborhood. He couldn't see as far because of a church building that had a huge cross right in front of it. And one day the gate was accidentally left open and this little toddler, this little boy wandered out of the yard. Amen. Every mother and father's nightmare. And he went to explore the neighborhood. And very quickly he was lost. The local police found the little boy wandering the streets and they saw that he had no supervision. They asked him, young man, where do you live? The little boy responded. He said, I, I don't know. They asked him, what is your telephone number? And again, he said, I, I don't know. They asked for his parents' names and all that he knew 
was she called them mommy and daddy. And as the police officer was wondering what to do, the little boy remembered something. And he said this. She said, Mr. Policeman, if you take me to the cross, I will know how to get home. That big cross that seemed to be blocking his view to what's beyond the cross was in reality a beacon of hope to guide him to the place that he needed to be. He quit looking at the situation and he got his mind on the cross. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, get your mind off of the situation. Couldn't let the enemy beat you up with the situation and get a fresh look at the cross this morning. Oh, the old red cross, it made a difference one day and the old is still making a difference today. Hallelujah. Praise God this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for the cross. And that's what Habakkuk did. Instead of looking at the hopeless situation, he looked a little higher. And it changed his whole outlook. Psalms 121 and verse 1, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. <clears throat> he that keepeth thee will not slumber. The psalmist said, I've got to get a new perspective. <laughs> I've got to look up a little higher the hills. <laughs> I've got to look up into the hills from whence come my help. Maybe this morning you've forgotten that your help doesn't come from the financial arrangements of the world. It doesn't come from the IRS or even uh, the Congress this morning. Our help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And if you can trust him, your foot will not slip. Your foot will not slip. He will keep you. Hallelujah. We've got to remove ourselves from the view that life is putting upon us and pulling us down. We have to go to a place of prayer where we can begin to see things in the eyes of God. That's why Solomon said in, so in Proverbs chapter 3, in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, trust in the Lord. Say trust this one. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. When we cry out with a bunch of questions like the prophet did, we are viewing our situation from our perspective. God, why me? Lord, I don't understand. This is not fair. But you can't continue to do that and walk with God this morning. We have to gain a new spiritual perspective. You said, I can't seem to do that, Pastor. Yes, you can. I'll give you a one-word answer this morning that you might not like. It's called this, patience. <laughs> Amen, patience. That's how Habakkuk did it. He removed himself from his situation, and he said, you know what? I'm just going to find a high tower, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to wait on God. <laughs> we wait and see what the answer will be. When we take the time out to wait on God and to listen to him concerning our situation, we began to see things from heaven's perspective instead of ours this morning. Habakkuk said, I'll watch and see what God's going to say. And so he was watching and waiting. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 33 says this about that mindset. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, blessed is a man that hears me. And that's watching daily at the gates, waiting at the post of the door. Because when you watch and you wait for the Lord through prayer and the word and dedication, the answer is going to come. He will not go by without touching you as you reach out to him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Sadly, most people and many Christians this morning have little patience. America has become a microwave and fast food society. And we have fast planes, fast cars, good roads. We have a lot of gas, especially now with the prices down. down. Yet we're always, somebody said, we're, you know, you're going somewhere, you're going nowhere fast. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm going nowhere fast. But I'm going where you're going, I don't know, but I'm going. Hallelujah. <laughs> And we can get our oil changed in less than 20 minutes, but that's too long for us. 
We have minute rice. Amen. That's been out for quite a while. We have instant pudding. Amen. Instant uh, pockets of meal, frozen meals. We can get them from the freezer and pop them in the microwave and out they come in a few moments. But that lack of patience, that lack of patience and that and manageable time makes us settle for less than the best. Instant, I don't care how good they are. Instant mashed potatoes aren't as good as a real thing. Can I get an amen out there this morning? Hallelujah. And they're okay in a pinch, but they won't take the place of the real thing. If you're a coffee drinker this morning, you know instant coffee isn't the same, amen, as that percolated coffee that comes through the machine. Microwave food is all right in a pinch. And it's by, you buy a little bit better, it might be fairly good. But it's just not as good as oven baked or stove fried. Hallelujah. You just can't replace the real thing. Oh, this morning, if we're not careful, we'll let that mindset of being uh, without patience and, and then settling for the second best uh, drift over into our spiritual walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. But he says, come and dine. The master calleth, as the old song says. Come and dine. The master calleth. Amen. He's got a table spread where the host of God are fed. And he says, Will you take the time to come and sit down with me in one place in the New Testament? Amen. He spoke out about those that were invited to come and he sent out the invitations and they all made excuses. And the master got angry and said, Forget it, forget them. I'll go out there and find somebody that'll take the time. God's looking for you to take the time to spend with him this morning. That, that's the way it works with God sometimes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40 and 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip on down to verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But here it is. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, I like eagles. I like to see them as they're soaring up there. But well, you know what's beautiful about them is once they get up in there in that high plane, hallelujah, you know, they don't even have to work to keep on flying around. They just kind of twitch the wings a little bit because they're gliding on the current. That's what you need to do this morning. You need to get up in a higher place in the Lord. And just glide around in the presence of the Lord where he would lead you. Come over here. Okay, Lord, I'll twitch my prayer life a little bit. Come over here. Okay, God, I'll be dedicated and I'll follow after you over there. He's looking for those that have commitment and dedications and patience to obey him and follow him. More times than not, God is going, God is going to work in his time and his way, not ours. That's why Naaman had to dip seven times. <clears throat> Some of us would have quit at five. We might have quit after three. After we came up and had all that dirty water on us. That's why Joshua marched around Jericho as many times as he did. That's why Sarah did not have Isaac until she was 90 years old. <laughs> God had his own time. That's why it took God 400 years to take Israel out of Egypt. Because God had his own time. We have to learn that God is going to do it his way. God's going to do his way, church. Child of God, he's going to do his way. He knows what's best in his time. And we have to learn to have patience on him, with him. Did you know that throughout the New Testament, in the writings of the New Testament, patience and faith are always working together to produce what Jesus wants in our hearts? At least 13 times, patience and faith are listed as working one with the other. I'll just read a few of them this morning. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 4. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for what? For your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. That is the church that turned the world upside down with the gospel of Jesus Christ in spite of the persecutions, in spite of the tribulations. They had patience and faith and they persevered. Hebrews, Paul said in Hebrews 6, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit 
the promises. Hallelujah. You want to inherit the promises of God? It's going to come by faith and patience. James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this. Here's why you can do that. He said that the trying of your faith. What's it work this morning? It worketh patience. Hallelujah. But let patience have her perfect work. That she may be perfect and entire. Wanting another. In other words this morning. Your faith develops your patience and your patience increases your faith even more because as you have faith in the Lord and you have patience to keep on going amen one day at a time one step at a time it helps to increase your faith faith and patience go hand in hand this morning many times the reason why our faith is so weak is because our patience is so limited maybe I'm preaching to myself this morning hey, I probably am hallelujah but that, that's sometimes why our faith is so weak is because we have little patience amen we have set uh, we have let our social uh, influences and expectations be applied to our walk with God. And when God is trying to build faith in us, uh, amen, we don't have the patience to let him see it through. Hallelujah. God is going to answer your prayer this morning. God's going to answer your prayer every single time. Hear me. He's going to answer your prayer every single time. But his answer is not always what you want. Hallelujah. You thought I was going to. Say something else, didn't you? He does answer. His answer may be yes, but sometimes his answer is no. And sometimes his answer might be not this time, child. You look at Noah. <clears throat> Noah, why do you have to wait 40 days, Lord? Why do you have to go through the process of years and years? Patience. Faith. Joshua, I mentioned him. Lord, why seven days? Why can't we just do it once? Get it over with. Patience. Each day, each time frame of those individuals and many others made them exercise their faith and increase your patience. What we're going through right now this morning can make you, uh, it, can, it can do the same thing for you. It can make you exercise your faith and increase your patience. I know we're all impatient to get past this pandemic and get back to normal as we call it. But in the meantime, God is saying, I'm working on your faith. I'm working on your patience. Amen. If you can't go through this little part of bump in the road of your life, what's going to happen is something greater happens down the road. You need to develop faith in Jesus Christ. And through that faith, increase your patience. Amen. The book of Habakkuk is called a minor book, as I said, not because it's less important, but because of its size. It's small. But there are two important truths revealed in that book. The first is patience, and the second is faith. One important verse, <clears throat> excuse me this morning, one important verse is found in Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold his soul which is lifted up. That means someone who's full of pride. They're full of themselves. His soul which is lifted up, full of pride, is not upright in him. In other words, his soul is not in the right place. His spirit is not right with God. But the just shall live by his faith. Hallelujah. The one that's looking to himself, he's not going to have faith and patience because he's looking to himself. Amen. But he goes on to tell us, amen, and, and reaffirm, the just shall live by faith. Amen. We're going to persevere. We're going to be victorious because we're putting our trust in God. God instructs Habakkuk to write it down uh, so it's uh, shared and understood. In Habakkuk 2 and 2, the Lord said to me, he said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets and that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it. There it is again. Wait for it, prophet, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Though this prophecy this morning could be applied to Habakkuk's time. When Babylon would conquer God's people, the biblical principle that is there could also be applied to us this morning. We must have patience. If we don't have patience, it will destroy your faith. You say, I thought God was going to do it this time. I thought God was going to do it then. I've been praying this long and it hasn't happened yet. You need to hold on to your faith. Abraham and Sarah got tired of waiting on the promise of God. And they said, I'm going to take matters in their own hands. You get a handmaiden. You're going to have a child. But I'm tired of waiting on God. And because of that one act, 
action. The world has suffered violence year after year, hundreds of years now. The just shall, or I should say, or should I say, must live by faith. If we don't have faith, it's impossible to please God. And I know you want to please him this morning, or you wouldn't be listening, hallelujah, to the message today. Fast forward now to our day. These things were written for our admonition, the scripture says. The generation upon whom the ends of the world will come. The message for us is still the same today. The message is still the same. In the book of Revelation chapter 17 through 20, we read that Babylon rising again. Mystery Babylon. The Bible says she will conquer the world again. That, that spirit of Babylon. And like Habakkuk, the church... We'll be wondering, what God, what, what are you doing, God? Some people even right now are saying, God, what are you doing? You're going to have to learn to have patience and faith this morning. We've got to be patient. Though it seems like God's not listening sometimes. Though it seems like evil is having its way. People get so wrapped up thinking about evil, they forget the good that is so much greater. Because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Don't you dare lift up the enemy of God to a stature that he, that, that he thinks he deserves. He is nothing in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is only one like him this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. And so God is coming. And he will not delay. You've got to have patience this morning. You can't lose faith. We just read it. The just shall live by faith or the just should be living by faith. The apostle Peter referred to this in 2 Peter chapter 3. He said this in verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days Scoffers walking after their own lusts. And here's what they're saying, he says. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That is what the world is saying about Jesus. Oh, it's been over 2,000 years since he was born. It's been over 2,000 years since he died. You Christians are still going on about he's coming back to take you away. You can't seem to talk about it enough. Nothing has changed since the beginning of time. I want to tell you this morning, have patience, have faith, for the promise of God will come to pass. Hallelujah. That's what some people are saying today. But let me exhort you this morning, have patience and faith in the promise of God. His word will be fulfilled. The just shall live by faith. Listen to what Peter goes on to say. And I'm going to not go a whole long, longer this morning, but follow me a little bit longer. Amen. Listen to what Peter goes on to say in 2 Peter 3 and 8. He said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. He said this, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. You know, the Lord is not, you know, lackadaisical about his promise. Well, I promised it, but maybe I'll change my mind. No. Amen. As some men count slackness. But he said, here it is. It's long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah. He said, he's just waiting. He wants everybody to be saved that can't be saved. He wants everybody that will come and call on his name and come to him and walk after him in obedience and submission. He wants them to come and be born again of the water and the spirit. Hallelujah. And he makes that clear. But then he says in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also. He says, seeing this in verse 11, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? He said that day will come. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this morning. Amen. If you're watching and you're waiting and you're praying, you won't be caught unawares. Hallelujah. Is anyone getting a clear picture this morning from God's perspective today? Hallelujah. Though it hasn't happened yet, it hasn't unfolded like we thought it might have in our lifetime. But it's 
going to happen because the word of God will stand for eternity. You need to have patience and have faith this morning. You must have patience. You must learn to wait on the Lord. Amen. Are you watching this morning? Amen. Are you waiting for his return? Or are you just too busy watching the world this morning? Let me say that again. Are you watching and waiting for Jesus this morning? Or are you too busy watching and waiting on the world's agenda today? Luke chapter 21 and verse 34 talks about the importance of watching. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighted down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day comes on you unexpected. He's talking to the church this morning. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. The, the earth. And here's what he says. Watch therefore. Say it with me this morning. Watch therefore. And pray always that you may be kind and worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Jesus said, come on. Watch. And while you're watching, be praying. Be plugged into the Spirit. And when I come, you'll be ready. Hallelujah. And Matthew 26 and verse 40. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. Amen. And said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? He was just talking about a time period uh, at the end of his ministry. He said, just watch with me for that hour. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, it's our nature. Amen. We don't have a lot of patience. But the spirit of the Lord is saying, come on, church. Get full of faith. Hallelujah. Have patience. I'm in control. Hallelujah. Your prayers are heard. I know what's going on, and I have a plan. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that this morning. Luke chapter 18 is the last scripture I'm going to read from this morning. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the parable of the widow who was persistent. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought, always ought to pray and not, and not lose heart, saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. Oh God, hallelujah. This guy, didn't, he didn't worship God. He didn't even care about God. But there was a widow. Oh, hallelujah. There was just a, an elderly lady in that city. And she came and saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And, and he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, self, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, I don't care anything about that. Yet, because this widow troubles me, <clears throat> I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Oh, that's a cry out for, for intercessory prayer warriors. Those that say, Lord, I know that's what you're saying, but I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to hold on to faith. I'm going to have patience. But in the meantime, I'm still going to be calling on the name of the Lord. And he says, don't you think that God is going to hear you? like he heard that widow woman he answers the question himself in verse 8 I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man comes will he really find faith on the earth not just that easy believers of faith yeah yeah Jesus existed no will he find that faith that holds on to the word. That faith that challenges the heart. As the scripture says God desires. He seeks those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Those that got a hold of the promises of God. Their faith has reached up and grabbed a hold of God and his word. And so it's gotten down in their heart. To, they, yes, they struggle. Yes, they have a, 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 a opposition in their life. They have, they have situations in their life. But they're holding on by faith. Hallelujah. They're holding on to the anchor. Hallelujah. It's kind of like the old song that says, He took me off the miry clay and set me on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. They made that commitment because they're walking with Jesus. How about, how about you this morning? Hallelujah. Are you, are you ready? Are you even watching? 
for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are you waiting for him? Are you anticipating him? Amen. Like, uh, like the groom and the bride that is brought to us in scripture and the church being the bride anticipating that he would come anytime through those doors. Amen. They're preparing themselves. They're adorning themselves. Amen. With the righteousness of God. They're allowing the Lord to prepare their hearts, their lives. And as Jesus talked to the Pharisees, that's one reason he was so strongly opposed to them. Because they, they, they their mind had the law, but their heart it was not applied here. And so he said, uh, uh, he said, outward, you're white as sepulchers, but inside you're dead men's bones. He said, you shouldn't have let that other undone. He said, I'm not saying he's to, to disregard the law. Jesus said, I haven't come to destroy the law. I've come to fulfill it. Hallelujah. But remember the Old Testament. Amen. God prophesied there's coming a day. Hallelujah. When I'm going to have a people that have a, a tablet of the law written on their heart. Mom and dad don't have to make them love me. Grandma and grandpa don't have to make them love me. Hallelujah. They just got something called faith. They got a hold of him. And with patience, they wait for it. Hallelujah. It's kind of like children when they're waiting for the gifts to be open. The party is there. The people are there. Even before it happens, they've got faith that's going to happen. It's going to be there. And so they run down. That's one of the days of the year when they have a lot of patience. <laughs> so now, no set. Now wait. It's not your turn. Your, your turn's coming. And they're ready to open the gifts. I will hope this morning that in your heart you can get to that place in your walk with the Lord. That it becomes more than just going to church or reading the Bible as a book. But it becomes a walk with God. And it becomes bread of life. And you say, oh, I'm going to consume it. I like fresh bread. Too much. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that you can buy it. Pop it in the oven. And it's hot. You put the butter on it. It's good. Hallelujah. There's nothing like it. Anticipate it. Maybe you can get to that place. I pray. Like David said. He said, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because where he is is where I want to be. My mind is worried. I'm struggling with things and situations that happen all around me. But I know if I can just touch him, if I can be with him, everything's going to be all right. You see, you've got to start that walk. Amen. All of those that were touched by Jesus had got the answer. They had to first step out by faith. They had to cry out. Sometimes somebody had to pick them up and carry them to Jesus. But there had to be some type of action that said, I'm going to do it. How many times have you come to the house of the Lord or maybe you heard a message preached or, uh, or something from the word of God has touched you and you feel a tugging and, and, uh, and you're, you're almost like King Agrippa when it tells Paul, almost you persuaded me to be a Christian. And when the spirit of the Lord reached out and touched you and tugged at you and you, you kind of jerked at it a little bit but you didn't make that step of commitment. And what I'm saying this morning, amen, that there's a promise out there for you today if you're willing to get a hold of it by faith and it's found in the word of God. Amen. So I'm challenging you this morning. Let, let's make ourselves ready. If you haven't repented this morning, you need to call on this name this morning. Open your heart to him. Hallelujah. Get your eyes off of the, the storm. Get your eyes off of the news and off of everything else. Hey, get God's in control. Quit worrying for God. I'm telling you right now, he's not worried. He's not concerned. You're not finding him up there wringing his hands. Oh, what am I going to do? Gabriel, what are we going to do? Oh, uh, what, what, what should I do? Michael, come on. What well, you got to give me some ideas, guy. I know he knows exactly what he's doing. And so those that are trusting in him have learned to do that. And they're going to say, Lord, I don't, I don't know if I figure it all out, but I'm glad you're in control. And that's what I want to say this morning. Let, let's come in our hearts and let's wait on the Lord. Amen. Let, let's get a hold of the promises of God and let faith be exercised in our lives. Let's pull ourselves out of our situations. Let's do like Habakkuk and say, you know what? I got to get out of this. I can't listen to those people anymore. I can't listen to the news anymore. I can't listen to all this. It's pulling me down. And say, I'm going to do like Habakkuk. I'm going to get in my towel. The name of the Lord. And I'm going to find that place of prayer. And 
And I'm going to call on him and I'm going to be like the little woman. I'm going to keep calling on him until I get an answer. Somebody this morning, hallelujah, God has challenged you. You can receive the Holy Ghost right where you're at this morning. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. You can raise your hands. You can worship him. The Spirit of the Lord can rest you in that room like he did on the day of Pentecost and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Your heart can be uh, drawn to him and, and drawn closer to him and, and see planted in your heart take root and, and then you can desire to be baptized. If you want to be baptized, we'll baptize you. Amen. This week we'll come up here just you and me and maybe my wife or maybe one other whatever. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. But you have to desire to walk with him. So I'm challenging you today. Let's pull ourselves out of our situations and walk up the tower to the presence of the Lord and look to Jesus this morning. We could do that today and we sing to the Lord this morning, wherever you're at. I challenge you to look to him this morning. Hallelujah to the hills for what's coming through hell in the name of Jesus. for 
his presence this morning. Aren't you today? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad that he is with us this morning. Thank you for being in the house of God today. I hope something from our efforts today have reached into your home and to your environment wherever you're at today and have touched you through this ministry. Amen. If you want to support our ministry, you know, thank you for that. You can go on our Facebook page. You should have a, a link there to help you donate online if you want to. If you want to mail it to P.O. Box 279 in Lawrence, Missouri, 633. That's fine, too. We'll use it to keep the lights on and keep the work of the Lord going. Amen. And uh, I don't know, next time I come, I may look a little different. I might, I'm starting to prepare my... I'm, I'm almost prepared for being one of the disciples. My hair is just moving up. <laughs> and I may uh, let my wife uh, try to cut my hair, so I don't know what I look like. <laughs> uh, this kid, she's done it for four years ago. So, you know, and uh, I was just thinking of her, uh, one of her relatives, I can't remember who it was, who was cutting it mistakenly, the clip thing came off of it, and it gashed his hair, so they just cut it all off and bald head. So I don't know if that's what I'll be like tomorrow. I mean, next week or not, but... Amen. But anyway, hey, it's good. God's good. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. So, it, so I, I say one more time this morning. Amen. Let's have faith in the promise of God. And let's have patience to wait for it. Will you do that? Don't get so wound up with what's going on. You lose your patience. Amen. We need it. Because otherwise you're going to get frustrated. Uh, you're a child of God. He knows where you're at. He's in control. Praise God. In the name of the Lord. We want to pray as we leave here this morning. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. This time we've worshiped together. We've felt your presence. We've been blessed, Lord, by the, the worship. Blessed by your word that always touches our hearts. I pray today the seed that's been thrown out there today will catch ground that is good somewhere, Lord. And just get a hold of it. Put roots down into that life. And let them be impacted, Lord. As the sun of your spirit, God, your, your presence shines upon them. And the water, a river of life, Lord, nourishes that seed and brings forth fruit in their lives. Use us. Help us to grow, Lord. Help us to not be complacent. Help us to not be full of fear. Help us to not be overwhelmed with the cares of life that we forget while we're here. It's not to take care of the world's business, but it's to take care of our Father's business. You'll take care of this, this kingdom, this world. You have a plan. Go with us, we pray today. Keep us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Lord bless you this morning. Don't forget, May 10th, Mother's Day is coming up. It sounds like we probably won't be here, but we'll you know. Obviously, the next Sunday we'll come what's going on. But we hope to have a guest speaker that Sunday. Mark it on your calendar. Invite somebody. Share this video out. Let's spread the word, will you? In Jesus' name. Lord bless you this morning.